Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank everyone for joining us this morning to learn about BP Enroll, our new online enrollment service available to our active broker partners. Uh, joining us today is Matt Bird from Benefits Connect, and we have partnered with Benefits Connect for the development of BP Enroll. And just so everyone is aware, I mean, Matt is going to provide you with a demonstration of BP Enroll, and he's also going to introduce you to Benefits Connect, which is their full benefits administration system. Um, to, to help set the stage a little bit better, BP Enroll is the enrollment feature within Benefits Connect. And as your GA partner, I mean, we are constantly working to deliver resources that will help improve our efficiencies as well as yours, you know, and simplify the enrollment process, you know, for everyone. Now, as of today, with BP Enroll, uh, we can enroll groups with 51 or more, so our large group clients, um, can use, begin using BP Enroll. Beginning in April, we will have the ability to enroll small groups. And we have a second uh, webinar that's going to be conducted next Thursday on the 19th, where we will show you that functionality. Today, we're just going to focus um, more on the large group. But when you see the demonstration, you know, you'll, you'll begin to imagine how the service is going to be able to simplify the enrollment process, especially in the fourth quarter when things get so crazy this year. But for large groups, simply, um, if you do have a group that you want to utilize BP Enroll for, you'll simply notify your sales rep or your large group specialist that you would like to use BP Enroll for the enrollment. We will require a few more data elements beyond what we receive in the proposal census, but once we have that information, we'll have your group ready to go in one to two business days. Now, for small groups in April, you'll follow the same process. Employees will complete all the required enrollment questions online. The carrier-specific enrollment forms will be populated. The member will review the form for accuracy and submit using electronic signature. And the checks and balances are built into the process, so it should minimize any missing requirements, you know, that will be there on the employee level. Again, you know, just speaking to the efficiencies and the simplification, you know, in the enrollment. Now, in, as I mentioned, Matt is going to talk to you about Benefits Connect. Benefits Connect is their full bin admin system, and we have worked with Benefits Connect to uh, provide you with discounted pricing. Now, when I say you, um, Benefits Connect, as Matt will speak to, is a system that you can purchase, then make that available to all of your to all of your clients. So, but Matt will get into that in a little more detail with you. Now, before I turn it over to Matt, I do want to just remind everyone that you will receive a copy of the recording tomorrow. You, there will not be any slides um, because it is a live demonstration. But you will receive a recording, a recording, apologize, and any additional information that we have available to you, such as the discounted pricing, some FAQs, and other details that you'll find, you know, that will help you um, get started with BP Enroll. So again, everyone's on mute. If you have any questions, you know, please submit those in writing. And if we don't get to them during the presentation, we will wrap up with everything at the end. So Matt? Good morning. Thanks, Stacey. Um, my name is Matt Bird. I'm an account executive here at Benefits Connect. Um, Benefit, at Benefits Connect, we focus on online enrollment and benefit administration systems. Uh, one of the things that, things that makes us a little bit unique from other uh, vendors like ourselves is we're a broker-centric company. Um, so we try to work hand-in-hand -hand with brokers and, and try to, it's more of a partnership. Um, and, and we try to help you guys out as much as possible for like prospecting or retaining business. Um, you know, we could do, do joint marketing campaigns if need be. Um, so we definitely have the broker-centric model. Um, just a little bit about history. We started in 2001. Uh, we currently have about 390 brokers that utilize our platform. There's about 9,000 employer groups, so about in about 2 million lines. So um, we're probably in the middle uh, as far as size-wise, uh, but we're always expanding. You know, we're um, very flexible in what we can do, and um, we're really proud of our enrollment portal because we feel it's a way to kind of um, educate the employees as they go through the process, which I'll kind of show in, in detail as we go through this um, presentation. Uh, can you guys see my screen, Stacy? Can you guys see my screen? Okay, I should say Benefits Connect. Welcome. Yes, I can. I can see it just fine. Yeah. 
Perfect. So the first thing we're going to go through is we're going to go through the employee self-service portal. This is where the employees can go online, make their enrollment elections, and, and complete that process. So the first thing that the employee will do is they'll log in here. So once they log in to the, to the system, what they're going to see is a user agreement. Now these user agreements are customizable. So we can change them for each for whatever type of information you guys want to put on these user agreements, we can definitely change that up. Um, so there's no wrong or right information to put on here. Um, it's just whatever you guys want to do. The other thing about our system I want to point out um, is with a click of a button, you can change the whole process from English to Spanish. So if you have Spanish speaking of employees, um, we are able to you know, communicate it via um, all the text that you're going to see um, throughout this enrollment portal. Um, we also have videos and avatars as well, which I'll go into a little bit more detail here in a second. Um, but those would also be in Spanish. So we do have that um, functionality available um, with, with a simple click of a button. So once the employee goes through the user agreement, we'll hit accept. So now what they're going to look at is a welcome landing page. This is just kind of welcoming the employee to the open enrollment or if they're a new hire. Um, this page right here is customizable. We can change and, and put whatever type of information you want in here. Um, if the CEO of a company wanted to do like a 30-second video welcoming that employee to open enrollment or to the company, um, you guys can embed that type of video in here. Um, what we've done is we've created this logo. Um, you know, if you have a call center, um, if you have a contact number that you guys want to provide to these employees as well, you can see we put that in here um, also. So we can definitely add um, any type of features or, or information you guys want on the welcome screen. Matt, can I interrupt just for a moment? Yeah. I do want to clarify that um, you are, um, Matt is currently showing you the BP Enroll System, the online enrollment tool that, that will be available through Beer and Purvis. I do want to let all of our broker partners know that Beer and Purvis will be setting up this enrollment, so the system for the most part will be pretty standardized. Now, if you as the broker buy up, and purchase Benefits Connect and make the full system available to your clients, then all of the customizations can definitely take place. But in regard to what we are going to be making available, the, the enrollment will include features that you are going to see today, so I definitely want to point that out, but it will, there will not be as much customization as you, you may prefer um, just for BP Enroll. But also um, to let you know that the carrier partners that we will be we will be enrolling or setting up the enrollment for Beer and Purvis carrier partners. So the enrollment is available to you for our broker partners. Okay, thanks, Matt. Yep, sorry, no problem. Yeah, so. Um, and just to kind of piggyback on what Stacey was just saying, so this is my demo site that we're going to sh I'm showing you guys right now. So there's going to be some stuff in here that um, you know you might not even want to utilize, but it, it's just a way to kind of show you the, the full functionality of the system. So we'll hit next. And so when an employee logs in, and obviously they're going through the process. When they get to the personal information screen, what we try to do and what we recommend doing is pre-populate all their information. So the employee's not having to manually enter their personal info on the, on the system. They're actually just kind of going through, making sure everything's up to date and accurate. Uh, if they need to make a change or need to update anything, they definitely can. The other thing I want to point out, though, is we can capture information if we need to at the time of enrollment. So you see all these fields that are in red. These are required fields. So if there's not information showing up in one of those fields, they will not be able to continue with the enrollment process. So we definitely have the ability to capture info, and I'll just kind of show you an example. So I just took the last name out, and I'm going to hit next, and what you'll see is it's going to air out the last name field is required, um, and then we'll put the information back in there. Now I'll put the last name back in. I can hit next, and it's going to allow us to continue to the next page. Now the next screen you're looking at is, is the emergency contact information. So this is where the employee can go ahead and, and add um, and add their emergency contact if they need to. Um, again, this is something that um, you know can be turned on and off. I don't know, um, you know, if you guys want to utilize this for um, system to, to capture that information. But if you guys do, um, we have the ability to capture that. So once we'll hit next, the next screen you guys are looking at is dependent and beneficiary information. Uh, so again, if we have you know this information beforehand, we'll preload their dependent information in, in our system. Um, you notice that they already have a spouse embedded into the system. We're only going to be able to add children at the time. 
um, but they can add as many children as they, as, as they want. And it's as beneficiary, so they can click on add a beneficiary. Um, you know, it's going to notify the fields that are required uh, that need to be entered when they're adding a beneficiary. So once you hit, um, once you go through that, you hit next. Now what you're looking at here, um, this is our decision support tool. Uh, this is an interactive way uh, for, for an employee to enroll. Um, basically what this is doing is we're trying to find out how healthy the employee is. Um, so we're going to ask some basic health questions. You know, how would you describe your health? How often do you go to the doctor? Do you have any planned procedures in the upcoming plan year? So what we're trying to pinpoint is, you know, obviously how healthy they are, how often they go to the doctor, um, to determine whether or not they need a plan that's, you know, richer in benefits with a higher premium associated with it, or if they don't go to the doctor at all, we're going to recommend a plan, you know, that's, um, you know, not as rich in benefits with a lower premium. So that's all we're trying to do um, in determining this. Now, not everybody uses it. You can obviously turn this off. You don't have to utilize this tool. Um, but it's, it's there if, if, if need be. So we'll skip. The other thing we've done through our um, enrollment portal is not just a transactional system. It's kind of a way to educate an employee. So it's kind of like having an enroller sitting right next to the employee as they go through the process. So what we've done is we've added educational pages throughout the, the enrollment. So you can see here, um, you know, we added some uh, some information regarding medical plan. So we're talking about the difference between a PPO and an HMO. Uh, again, customizable. We can pick and choose whatever type of information you guys want to put in here. Um, I know, Stacy. I believe you guys are going to add some some educational pages to the process too, correct? Yes, we are. So prior to introducing the plans that are they're enrolling in for their medical or for their dental, et cetera, there will be um, just some general information pages prior to that that the members can read to, to educate themselves if, if they're just you know, brand new to this process. Okay. Thank you. The other thing that uh, we, we, we can also do is we can embed these videos. So this is just a little video um, that we've created um, through our video department. Now, this is just another way to educate an employee, give them additional information regarding products. Um, the nice thing about the videos and the avatars is with the avatars, they're very customizable. Um, you guys can provide the script. We can script it out and, and pretty much give them, you know, have that, that avatar talk to the employee with the script you provide. Um, but if you have employees that speak other languages besides English and Spanish, um, the avatars, we can create 29, we can get them to speak in 29 different languages. So chances are we can find a way to communicate with those employees that speak other languages besides English and Spanish. So once they go through the medical information page, you're going to hit next. And now we're going to dive into where, where the employee actually gets to enroll in, in, in the product. Um, you can see this best choice ribbon. This is based off our decision support tool. Um, so if you weren't utilizing it, it would not be there. But obviously, we went through it a little bit. So it's going to show it's going to recommend this PPO low 5,000 plan. Now, as an employee, if I'm still not 100% sure, uh, I still want more information, we can actually do a plan comparison. So you can hit compare, and now you're going to look at a side-by-side -side plan summary. So we're going to be able to show them deductibles, side-by-side -side view, you know, co-pays, out-of-pocket um, expenses, out-of-pocket maxes, everything that they'd want to see um, before they make their decision on which plan they want to enroll in. So it's right there in front of them. They know exactly what each product provides. The other thing we can do as well is you click on the plan name, and we can actually add additional information um, through the outline of benefits. So if we want to provide, you know, even the SBCs online, we can do that. The actual plan summary, it's the URL, so they can actually go on the on the um, carrier website to find a in-network doctor or find a doctor in general. Um, we can add that information on the outline of benefits. So it's just trying to give them as much information as possible um, so they feel confident in what they're enrolling. All data is live data as well. So you can see when I pick and choose which uh, dependents I want to enroll in the plan, you can see the pay period premiums changing. So there's no hidden fees. They know exactly what they're, um, what they're paying. So what we do on the back end of, of the system, which I'll show you guys here um, later on in the presentation, um, we build everything out. Uh, we put the rates in the system. Uh, this is what B, uh, BNP will be doing for you guys. So they'd be building everything out for you guys. But what we do is we take in consideration the payroll schedules in order for us to calculate these, these uh, pay period premiums. So that's what we're able to do. Um, on the back end so we can make sure every, all the information is up front and available to that employee as far as cost. Over here on the right-hand side, 
It's the election summary. It's basically tracking and letting the employee know where they're at in the enrollment process. So you can see right here, medical is bolded out, and so it's letting um, the employee know we're on the medical page. It's also going to list which, which, which is available um, to the employee as they go through the enrollment. So you can see we have a critical illness plan, a health care reimbursement, a dental, a long-term disability, um, a supplemental employee life. Uh, there's no wrong or right way to set up the system. Uh, it's just kind of what, you know, however uh, it, it, it's been uh, contracted to be set up. So each group can be different. Um, you know, it depends on how um, you guys want it to be, um, the, the flow of the enrollment to, to work. Pay period deduction. So you can see this is a, this is a summary of the totals um, listed above, and we just give you one flat amount. And then if you guys have a defined contribution set up, if any, any of your employer groups want to do a defined contribution set up, uh, we definitely have the ability to do that. Otherwise, if you want to do a traditional contribution method, that's fine too. Um, if we did that, obviously the defined contribution would not be showing up here. So we'll hit next. And so what you guys are going to notice, the theme of our enrollment portal is education. So again, we've had an educational page here. Um, you know, we talk about, you know, a critical illness plan. Um, they kind of go through it and find out what a critical illness plan is. We have the, the video embedded into this um, page as well. You hit next, and now we're going to, you know, enroll into a critical illness plan. Now, in order to elect your coverage amount for a critical illness plan in our system, you just use the slider, um, and you can pick your um, coverage amount. You also have the ability to waive if, if need be. And what I'll show you guys later is we can do customized waiver reasons in the system as well. So if you need to provide a, a, the reason why an employee is waiving coverage, uh, we can embed that into the system as well. The only thing I want to point out here on the right-hand side is you guys will notice that the, uh, the only thing that's changed really here is that now the employee critical illness is bolded out and it's letting an employee know we're on that section of the enrollment. Healthcare FSA. So if you guys are offering an FSA um, to one of your clients, you know we have the ability to educate the employee on on, on those products as well. Um, so once they go through the educational page, they hit next, and now we can you know allow them to enroll in in medical FSA, dependent care FSA. We can cap it out, so we can make this one obviously is for medical FSA. They can only elect up to twenty five hundred dollars. If they had dependent care, you know we can. Um, you know, make it up to 5,000, so we can definitely put that information in there. Um, the waiver reasons, you can see right here, if we had to put, you know, waiver reasons in there, um, we'd have this drop-down box, and every waiver reason available to that employee would be listed there, so they'd be able to pick and choose why they're waiving coverage. Again, on the right-hand side, uh, you can see the election summary is now showing the health care reimbursement. So what we've tried to do with this system is just make it as simple as possible. As you can see, it's pretty easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. You know, we, we really just focus on education. Again, so we're going to the dental prod, um, enrollment now. And you can see we've, we've added an educational piece on dental. Now, we understand not everybody's going to want to build it out like this, and, and we can change it up. Um, this is a, another um, system function we can do. Now this is uh, something that they just added to my demo site. So basically what this is, it's a, a way to, if we want to make sure an employee sees something or, or watches a video, what this is doing right here is actually setting it up to where the employee um, you know, has to watch a video. They have to watch it and before they can continue with the process. So it's just kind of a way to, to make sure we're educating that employee to the best of the abilities and making sure they're actually watching something um, without them bypassing it all together. So once this video is over, um, it's going to close and allow you to close it and then you can continue with the enrollment process. So it's going to be two more seconds and then we'll be done. So once you go through the video, you can see now we're, we're on the dental page. Um, again, so if there's multiple plans that are being offered for that particular product type, so like right here we have two different dental plans, you're going to get the compare option. So we can just do a compare option it's similar to what we saw in the medical portion. Um, so we're just going to kind of go over deductibles, out-of-pocket maxes, things like that. Uh, if you click on the plan name, again, the outline of benefits will pop up uh, if you wanted to add additional information um, regarding that product. Oops. Sorry about that. There's uh, the video, actually. I think I hit the wrong button. So the video is playing again, so I do apologize. Um, but again, so like these videos, like I said, they're very customizable. Uh, we have our own video department where we have uh, we have a couple people that actually create these, 
and we can definitely um, customize them and, and create any type of uh, um, a video you guys want us to um, to create. Now, when we go to the next pages, I just want to point out the educational pages we have in here. You obviously don't have to have them for every product, so you guys can kind of um, separate them out, or or you can actually embed them. Um, on the page itself, which I'll show you here in a second. So you can see we actually, if you didn't want to have the entire educational page, we can embed the video on here um, so that way they can still get information without having to have that, you know, separated out the educational page. So once they go through here, they're going to look at everything and, and again, they can choose the pendants they want to enroll in the plan. And they feel confident once they're enrolling in, they can hit next. Long-term disability, again, uh, we provide education. Uh, talk a little bit about um, the, the disability plan and how it works. And then they can actually go on here and enroll if they need to. And then the last plan is uh, we have in, on our system, on our demo site, is an employee life insurance product. Uh, so again, we've done the educational um, piece. Now, the only thing I want to point out here, uh, so if we're doing a voluntary life product and you want to put, put on our system, um, the difference uh, between these plans and other plans is we can build out the guaranteed issue amount. So you can see right here, it's letting the employee know the, the guaranteed issue amount is $100,000. Anything that exceeds it, it, it will be um, flagged. So we, if we need to build out um, EOI questions where we actually have a form, we can actually populate and make sure the employee gets, gets that form to ask, you know, to fill out the EOI questions, we can put that and embed that into the system. So there's different ways of kind of handling um, the live product. So once we hit next, the last screen that the employee is going to see is a consolidated enrollment. What this is, it's just going to be their final stage where they can kind of go and review all the information, uh, making sure the plans, what they wanted, the dependents they wanted to enroll, and they can also see the cost associated with each, each plan. Now, if they need to go back and make a change, they hit edit, it will take them back to the screen that they were just at or the medical portion and they can make a change. They can also still view the outline of benefits. So if they're still not 100% sure and still want to you know, get some additional information, they can pull up the outline of benefits to, um, to get that info that they want before they submit their enrollment paperwork. Now, you can go through. You can see the different plans that they enrolled in. You can see what they waived, what they waived. And you, see, you can see right here, it's just telling the employee that they waived the, the health care reimbursement. Um, you also can see this uh, Voyal Supplemental Employee Line product. Um, that it's you know letting the employee know that they was one hundred thousand dollars was approved for the guaranteed issue amount, but the one hundred seventy thousand, so the seventy thousand dollars over the guaranteed issue amount is being intended. So it kind of lets the employee know of that, of that as well. Now the benefit spending summary. This is if you're using a defined contribution setup. So if you weren't, then obviously this will not be showing up. And then the last three things that the employee can do is they can print this up and keep it with the records. They can email it to themselves or whoever, or if they hit finish. Once they hit finish, it's going to notify the back end of our system that, you know, John Doe enrolled, um, and if we're doing carrier feeds, all the, all this information will get sent over electronically to each carrier that we need to notify. So that's our employee self-service portal. Um, Stacey, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, there are some questions. Um, before I get into them, actually, I, I do want to just kind of let everybody know, as far as BP Enroll, and whenever you do notify us that you have a group that would like to use BP Enroll, we will establish kind of the, the enrollment window. So we will set a start date, and then we will also set an, an ending date or a close date. And during that time frame, employees will be able to go in, they will be able to enroll in their benefits, if they make a decision um, or they dis they change their mind or need to forgot to add an a dependent, they can go back into the enrollment system at any point during that window and make changes to their elections. Now, once the enrollment window closes, then employees will no longer be able to edit any of the information within the enrollment. If the employer has during has a new hire or has a termination, or maybe they forgot um, to add a particular employee to the census, they can go in, the employer will have access as well, and, and that employee can be added or removed during that enrollment window. Once the enrollment window closes, 
then no more additions and terminations um, will be made because no one will have access to the system. Now, if the employer wants to utilize you know, or have a full benefits administration system available to them, that's where Benefits Connect comes into play and you as the broker making that system available to the employer, which, which Matt will get into here in just a little bit. But there were a couple of questions and that did come up and they were for the, the ads and the terms. So hopefully what I, I just explained will address those questions. We were asked if BP Enroll will be available only for products sold through Beer and Purpose. And, and this is available for our carriers and for all the product lines that are available through our carriers, which, you know, medical, dental, vision, life, LTD. So the products that we have available, we can set up the enrollment for the group. Now, as far uh, we also received, a, uh, had a question as to whether or not this is optional for groups of 51 or more. This is optional for anyone. Um, we're making this available as a new service through Bear and Purvis. So just as we assemble, you know, hard copy, you know, paper enrollment kits and ship those out, just as we send our, you know, our electronic e-kits, you know, to you to forward on to your clients, BP Enroll will also be available. We simply just need to find out from you if this is something that you want to utilize during the enrollment process. So it's not a requirement by any means, but we would certainly encourage it because it will, it will simplify the enrollment, you know, especially as we're heading into the fourth quarter. So I do believe I addressed all the questions, Matt. So what I'll do now is um, I'll, I'll kind of talk about the back end of our system where actually all the, the new hires and terminations with, with Stacey was just talking about would, would be processed. And now this is only available if you guys, um, you know, purchase the full system because um, right now what's going to happen is uh, Beer and Purvis will be the ones building everything out for you guys and you guys will not have access to this part of the system unless you purchase the whole system if you want one of your employer groups to be able to, you know, if you have an online Ben Admin system where they can utilize it throughout the year. Um, then you guys would have access to this part of it and be able to allow your employer groups to kind of go on here and, and, and kind of do all the, all the um, you know, the, the online enrollments and terminations and all that fun stuff. So what you're seeing here, uh, if, if a broker utilizes our tool, what you're seeing here, this is their system administration menu. Um, so this is kind of how you manage your entire book of business that's stored on our system. Um, so you have your company management, you know, your employee administration, system reporting, um, so like the system reports, if you wanted to run it at the broker level, and so I would run reports for all your clients in our system. Um, I'll show you the reports at the company level. It's just easier to use, um, especially in our demo site. So what we'll do now um, is we'll go to the company man management, and so we'll pick a company, and we'll just go to one of our demo sites on here. Um, so we'll pull up this company, and one of the things I want to point out is what we can do um, as far as this enrollment portal or this, this online Ben Admin portal is we where it says Benefits Connect, you know, we can customize this and, and put the group's logo on here. Uh, we can also change the color schemes as well. So we can make it kind of look and feel like it's the actual um, client's uh, um, system. So what we'll do now is we'll go through each, each category. So you've got the company administration. Uh, so this is where we kind of help you guys uh, build everything out. Uh, so what we'll do is, um, before I start actually, let's just talk about that a little bit. So what we do um, for most of our clients is, uh, is we'll build everything out um, for you guys kind of like what BNP is doing. Um, we'll, um, obviously there'll be an implementation process. You know, there's some paperwork that you guys have to complete. Once that paperwork's complete, you know, we'll start building out the site for you guys. And this is the type of information that we need um, to build everything out and make it run correctly. So, you know, the general contact information is the, you know, general company information. Um, the contact to the plan administrators will be in the system. Because um, one of the things we can do with this system is we can link you know, a, a, an employer or an employee, um, their email address to the site. Um, so there's a couple ways to kind of track, you know, all the activity that's in here. You can link an email, which would, in any time something happened or if somebody made a change, um, you would be automatically notified of that change via email. We also have the ability to run reports too, which I'll talk about in a second. So there's a couple ways of doing it. Um, and that's kind of why we're asking for contact information. As far as system settings goes, this is a rules-based system. Um, so like what Stacey was talking about earlier where, you know, 
they, they, after their window is open and closed, then they won't be able to kind of go online anymore to complete their enrollment. Um, and the way for us to lock the system and control what goes on is by these rules. So there's a lot of system settings we can do. Um, well, there's also, when you get to build out medical plans and the different plans, you know, there's eligibility rules we can build out there as well. So there's a lot of different features as far as, you know, waiting periods and things like that that we can build into the system to where, you know, not an employee can't go online whenever they want and add, you know, coverages. They have to have a qualifying event and, and all that fun stuff. So we'll, the only other couple things, legally, so we talked about it when I was showing you guys the demo site or the enrollment portal. Uh, we can change the, the user agreement. So you can see that's where you do it in here. You simply you can copy and paste the user agreement from a carrier site if you want to, or you can create your own. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, division. So this division uh, functionality is, is 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 a nice feature in our system because what we can do if you have a company that has you know multiple locations or maybe we track employees different and you kind of want to separate them out, you can use that division tab. Um, to do that. So what we've done here on my demo site is we create different locations. So each location can kind of be their own um, own company under the main company umbrella. So each like the Moines can have their own, you know, an admin uh, administrator who whoever the you know the, the HR contact is. They can even have their own, you know, payroll vendors, their own benefit package. Everything can kind of be separated out, um, but still tracked under the main group. And that's where those divisions would come into play. Employment categories, again, um, if you don't want to use divisions, you can use the employment categories and we can separate out you know, these employees and track them by these different employment categories. So there's two different ways of, of tracking employees in our system. Uh, payroll schedule, we talked about this during the, um, during the uh, um, enrollment portal section of the demo. But what we need is their payroll cycles. Um, in order for us to, to calculate the pay period deductions that you guys were seeing earlier, um, that's why we need the payroll schedule. So what we'll do is we'll take the payroll schedules and the actual premiums for each each plan and, and do the formulas on the back end so we can automatically calculate the pay period deduction. So this is why it's important to have the payroll schedules embedded into our system. Um, a few other things over here. Uh, pay time off. So it does some pay time off functionality, but this is not a time and attendance system. Uh, this is, we, we focus uh, strictly on benefits. So if you're looking for a system to replace an HRS system, um, this system probably is not the system of choice. Now, with that being said, what we can do, we can link this system to an HRS system if we want. Um, how we do it is by a file feed. It's kind of like what we do when we do carrier feeds. So it will be an automatic feed that's sent to the HRS system. Um, so there are ways to kind of connect those types of systems. And we can do the same thing with payroll as well, where if we have certain payroll vendors that you guys want us to link the system to, uh, we definitely can do that. We create feeds for you know pretty much any payroll system that is able to receive an import file from a vendor, an outside vendor. Um, if they can do that, then we can create a feed for them and, and link the two systems together. Um, you can import export data out of the system as well. Um, schedule events. So this is when you want to schedule like a um, export would be if you want to schedule like let's say we're doing an EDI feed to an, an Anthem. So what we would do is schedule that um, through here, and, and that feed would be sent over, let's say, at every Tuesday at 12 o'clock, we want to send over a carrier feed to Anthem. We would schedule that through here, and that would make create the report to um, be processed um, every Tuesday at 12. Um, reports, you can also, if you have a certain report that you run a lot in our system and you want to kind of automate that report, you can create that in here as well. So you can add a report that will be automatically ran and, and available to you guys um, whenever you want. Uh, the site branding and uploading images we talked about. So this is where we can kind of customize the site uh, and make the look and feel of the employer group. Employee administration, I'm going to go over last. I'm going to um, kind of I'm going to touch on that at, at the very end. Benefit plan administration. So the plan design, you know, this is where we where we kind of build out the plan. So you can kind of see. Um, you know, we'll have the ability to do the general plan design, the cost and coverage. You can kind of see what it would look like. And obviously, we, if we need to do the member rating, we can put that information in there as well. Uh, if we're doing member rating, you know, age banded, whatever composite rates, this system has the ability to kind of capture any type of rating functionality you throw at us. And so what you do to, for what we do to build everything out, you know, we have the eligibility rules. 
you know, contact plan options. So there's a there's a steps, there's a few steps to it uh, that we will do for you guys to build out the plans. And this is why, you know, once we build everything out, the system kind of runs itself, and, and because of all the information that goes into building everything out. Uh, the benefit providers are just the carriers in our system. The outline of benefits we talked about um, during the enrollment portal. Uh, so you can see here, you know, we can definitely add as much information as you want. You know, we put the URL in there. If you wanted to put the SBCs online and make them viewable to the employees, we can put that information in here through the outline of benefits. Uh, so this is kind of where we can add additional information if we need to. Matt? Yeah? I do want to um, touch on, you had mentioned carrier feeds and um, I do want to remind everyone, I mean, the carrier feeds are dependent on the carrier's ability to accept the data. And in the small group market, as we all know, um, that those pipes are not open at this time. So in regard to carrier feeds for small group, um, that is not something, that is not a feature that you would be able to utilize at this time. Now, it's not to say that the carriers aren't, you know, more actively, you know, pursuing that option and, and are much more open, you know, to doing that um, than they have been in the past. So, you know, our fingers are crossed that we're making progress in that area. But at this time, the feeds for small group are not open. Sorry, yeah, Stacey, I should, I should explain that a little bit more when I was going over that, so I do apologize. So, yeah, so, you know, and then, so basically with the, the, the break point where we can send carrier feeds um, is normally about 100 lives. Uh, carriers will normally work with us, um, 100 lives and above. Anything below that, um, it's a little bit more difficult. Now, like what Stacey said, it is changing. Um, they're starting to become, you know, more responsive to, to carrier feeds. Um, so there's other things we can do too, like we can do one-time spreadsheets sometimes and, and do other things around it. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we're still hoping that for the smaller groups that we one day we'll be able to do everything electronically. Um, you know, qualifying events, uh, waiver reasons. So if you're using this system and, and you want, you know, if, if you purchased the whole system and you wanted to, you know, let your employer groups utilize it and, and kind of you know, if they wanted a new hire qualifying event or a termination. The way our qualifying events work in our system is an employee can go online and access the site anytime they want throughout the year. Once they do that, you know, they can add a, a dependent, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you how they add a dependent here and when we get to the employee administration portion. But they can add a dependent. What will happen is you guys will be notified. That's what I was talking about. You can link an email address or you can simply run a report. Um, to show the the, pro, the activity that's been happening to the system, you'll be notified of that of that request. Um, you can go online and review it, confirm that's a qualifying event, apply the qualifying event to the um, employee's account. Once you do that, then it's going to release the system. It's going to open up the waiting periods for a qualifying event. So if they have 30 days to add a newborn child to their plans, it will give that employee those 30 days in our system to go ahead and, and complete the enrollment. Um, that's kind of how our qualifying events work in the system. And I'll talk about new hires and, and terminations when we get to the employee administration. Um, but that's kind of how the qualifying events work in our system. Waiver reasons, we can customize waiver reasons as well. And then the benefit statement, um, it's like a hidden paycheck, so we can format that a little bit differently. And I'll show you what a hidden paycheck looks like um, when we get to the employee administration. As far as company reporting, uh, there's a lot of different reports you can choose from. Uh, right now we have this ad change and term report, so this is what you'd want to run. Um, if we don't have an email linked to our system, you would want to run the ad change and term report to kind of capture all the activity that's happening through the site. The W-2 reporting is a new report that was created um, because of the ACA, um, so you have that report that you guys can utilize as well. We've got some COBRA reports you can, you can um, run. We also have the ability to link the system to a uh, COBRA vendor, no matter the size of the group. Um, so we can do, um, let's say if we have a um, new hire or termination and we need to notify the COBRA vendor, you know, that, um, that you know, that, that person's been added or terminated. Um, depending on the COBRA vendor, if they allow us to send the, in, the, the carrier feeds uh, or the, the, the feed to the COBRA vendor, um, we should be able to do that electronically. So you can see there's a lot of different reports you can choose from. We have some census reports that you know you can run as well to kind of help track the census information. Um, payroll deduction reports. 
So like I was saying earlier, we can link a payroll vendor um, to our site. We also have the ability to create these payroll deduction reports. So you can see some of the filters. We can do it by you know, the date range. We want to break it down by division, employment categories. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do um, as far as you know, breaking out and, and kind of filtering out the report. I'll just show you what a planned enrollment report. Now this report, um, all of our account managers and, and everybody says this is the report that gets requested the most. It's like a detailed report. Um, so you can see we can break it down quite a bit. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like. And every report we run, we can do it in either PDF or CSV. We can even do it in HTML format if you wanted to. So I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, so you can see, I'll make it a little bit bigger for everybody. So you know you're going to have the names of the employees, some of their you know, Social Security, um, date of employment. So this is going to give you basic information regarding the employee. You know, if they had any dependents, their dependents would be enrolled in. Um, which plans they enrolled in, the effective date, um, and then the actual cost uh, of each plan will also be listed in here as well. So this kind of gives you a pretty good understanding of all the, um, you know, the employees, you know, benefits and what dependents if they need dependents for enrolling the plan uh, when everything was effective. So this is a report that's ran quite a bit. Um, so if we need to do an audit or anything like that, this is the report we run most of the time. Company communication, so again, employees can have access to this site throughout the year if you purchase the Ben Admin platform. So if you have forms or anything that you know an employer group wants to be filled out before they make any changes, or if you have you know certain forms you want to make available online, you would use this forms library to do that. So any, any form or any type of document that you stored on the forms library, um, an employee would be able, to, be able to access that throughout the year. Um, Email broadcast, so you can send the emails out through the system. Now, you can't do it to an individual, uh, but you can do it to a group of employees. So if you have groups, you know, employees by division, um, you can send out emails to each division, or you can just send a mass email out to any employee that has an email address linked to our site. Uh, news and bulletins, it's a bulletin board, so it's just like it sounds. So if you want to put, let's say I have a, you know, you guys' uh, open enrollment is coming up in, in three weeks or whatever, and you want to put that information on the site, um, you can use that news and bulletin board functionality to do that. And then lastly, uh, if you want to make the employee handbook viewable online, there's two options. One, you can simply upload the current employee handbook that's on file, or we can kind of help create one through our employee handbook wizard. So there's 55 pages of it, um, but it definitely can help you um, build one out for an employer group if you guys need to utilize it. Um, the company administration uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, does anybody have any safety or is there any questions before I go to the employee administration? Yeah, there are a couple. Um, you had mentioned W-2 reporting. Are you speaking to the, um, the ACA reporting requirements under the IRS uh, 6056? Is that what you're speaking to? Or no, it's, it's, it's a different report. We actually... Um, you know, we really, we created, a, we also have an ACA manager tool um, that we just released that can, can accommodate those reports. Um, that we can, you know, you guys will have my contact information, so if you guys want to talk about that offline, uh, we do have a system in place, it's called our ACA manager tool, that can kind of help with all that um, functionality. We just kind of released it, um, I believe, two months ago. It was a system that we decided to create. Um, and the reports, you know, they were just finalized by the IRS, so we just established those. Um, we started building them out in, in our system. Um, but the ACA manager tool can kind of help you with look back periods and, you know, sending the exchange notices out. And eventually we'll be able to do the reporting for you. Okay, thank you. So then on the ACA, just the ACA tracking system that you have available, it's called the ACA manager, correct? That's correct. And so with Benefits Connect, with the pricing that we have negotiated for our broker partners, the ACA manager is included with Benefits Connect. And so that tool actually that helps employers measure like variable hour employees and track the data for the IRS reporting. Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Okay. All right, so, I'll let, yeah, go I, ahead and go. Um, you can, um, 
Sorry to interrupt you, Matt. Um, I'm going to read through some okay. additional questions if you just want to um, proceed with the demo. Okay, perfect. I'll kind of keep on going, then we can answer them afterwards if you want to. Um, you know, just real quick before we go, you like to so when we get to the employee administration, review employee changes. So you can kind of review all the uh, everything that's going on. Um, so you can kind of see so everything's right there. So you can see exactly what's being changed in each person's account. Um, so when you log on to the system, instead of having to go through each individual uh, employee's account, it's right there. So you can kind of see exactly what's happening. So once we go to employee administration, so this is where we can add an employee. So if we need to go ahead and add an employee, you just hit add, and it's going to take you through the steps of adding. So it's going to ask you for the basic information. Um, you hit save, and you just kind of continue, and we can put the link to the benefits as well if we need to. Um, we need to uh, terminate an employee. Um, I'll just kind of show you that real quick. We'll hit search. You can list all their employees that are listed here. Um, so you can see some of these employees are still in the system are either retired or terminated, so it's going to label what each employee is. But if I need to go in there and terminate an employee, you, know, you click on the employee that you want to terminate. You hit personal information, and when you go to status, um, you terminate them by hitting, you know, change their, their employment status from active to terminated. You pick if it's voluntary or involuntary, um, and then you pick the reason. So once you do this, you know, say laid off. If you want to put a note in the system, you can. You can pick the effective date when their, you know, when their coverages will terminate. You want to put their final payroll date in here uh, when their system access gets turned off. So you hit save, and depending on the functionality, um, for the larger groups, obviously, if you're doing carrier feeds, you know, the 100 and above, um, all this information will get sent over to the carrier electronically. Um, the other thing we can do is this information, um, like I said earlier, if we were doing um, sending COBRA feeds, um, all this determination would get processed and sent over to the carrier, uh, the COBRA vendor, so they could uh, send out the qualifying event notice. So that's kind of how the enrollments and terms work in here. Um, so the other thing for for the new hire, before I um, you know continue with with that, so you guys would build out and add a new hire in here. Um, once you add the new hire, you would simply allow the employee to go online to complete their enrollment. Um, through the employee self-service portal we showed you guys in the beginning of the demo. So that's kind of how the new hires would work. So you would add their basic information in here. Um, once that information is loaded into the system, you would release the employee self-service portal and allow the employee to continue the process and enroll in, in, their, um, in their benefits. So what we'll do is we'll kind of just show you what each, each uh, section of the employee administration has. So you know, you have the general contact information you can put in here. Um, you know, we have, you know, employment, is there employment information, so like hire dates, you know, if they're, what kind of their employment category, full-time exempt, non-exempt, however that's set up. Um, um, employment type would be full-time, part-time, uh, temporary, seasonal, and per diem. Now, just to kind of piggyback off the AC manager, uh, obviously, you know, this is important to kind of find out what kind of classifications employees are because, you know, the AC manager will be linked to the system as well. So if you want to utilize that tool, um, you know, we would need to know what kind of employment type they're seasonal or full-time or whatnot. Um, hours work, so we can upload hours into our system. So if we need to track that information, we can. Uh, current job titles, so if we want to put that information in there. And then one of the things that I think is unique is we can actually store reviews. So if you have like an annual review, um, you can store that online so the employees can have access to that throughout the year. Um, education is just talking about their schooling, their certificates, emergencies, emergency contacts, uh, medical. The medical tab right here is uh, their primary care physician. Uh, payroll is, you know, obviously the payroll information. So we can capture this information if we need to. Um, you know, their current rates, estimated annual salary hours, um, their annual salary. So there's a lot of different information we can capture. Their, their payroll frequency. So if you have, you know, different payroll frequencies for different classifications of employees, we put that information on here. Um, that way, if it was from either biweekly or weekly, let's say this employee was weekly, that way when they went online to enroll, um, their pay period deductions would be based off weekly deductions, not the biweekly. So it's, this payroll stress schedules are very important. Uh, we went over the status. Now, journal, the journal category is, is a journal categories and journal entries are if we want to um, add, you know, notes into the, uh, into the system regarding a, uh, an employee, 
um, you put it to the, the journal entry so we can add, you know, if you have a claims issue and you guys have multiple people working on it, uh, you can actually store the EOBs online to this particular person's account. Um, you can, um, you know, and put notes in there that only you guys can see if you want it. As far as dependents go, this is where you go ahead and add a dependent. Um, so you can kind of see um, you have two dependents in the system. If you want to add another one, we can. And then uh, benefit plan information. So one of the things I want to point out, if the employee, um, so this particular employee I pulled up uh, has no plans uh, available to them. But if they did, um, they'd be listed here. But the other reason why, and the reason why I pulled this guy up, is because let's say an employee cannot go online to enroll for whatever reason, uh, you can still go through here and, and walk them through the enrollment process through here and enroll somebody in benefits through the back end of the system if you guys need to. We prefer everybody go to the employee self-service portal, um, but we know that's not always possible. So if you guys need to complete an enrollment um, on the back end, you guys can do it through here. It's going to list each, list each coverage that is available to that employee and you're just going to go through the process and enroll um, that employee in benefits this way. And then the last thing I'll, I'll show you is the statement of benefits. So this, like I said, it's a hidden paycheck. So we, we talk about, you know, the annual gross compensation. Um, we do some, you know, company tax-related benefits, so you can kind of see that information as well. And then we, we dive into, you know, not only is the or is the employer contributing, you know, fifty thousand dollars towards your um, salary, but they're also contributing, you know, the, the three thousand eight hundred twenty-five dollars and twenty-five cents towards their employer paid benefits. So we do these little illustrations, pie charts, to kind of give them a a nice uh, view of what exactly you guys provide them as an employee, or the employer provides their employees. So it kind of gives them a nice illustration. Again, this is something that can be turned off. Because we understand not every employer wants to show this because sometimes they might not contribute enough or a lot to their benefit package. So we can turn this functionality on or off. So Stacy, that's pretty much the presentation. Um, I, I just that was a quick overview of, of the Ben Admin system. There's a lot, of, you know, it was set up for for a lot of different uh, you know coverage types. So there's really nothing um, we can't do as far as the. Uh, you know, obviously we talked about the carrier connectivity. Um, it, it, it depends on the size of the group, but we have established, or, or I think currently we have like 755 carrier uh, connections established throughout the country. Uh, so we're able to connect electronically with everybody if we need to. Um, it just really depends on the size of the group. Okay. Well, thank you, Matt. Um, we do have some questions. So. I, I kind of want to step back and let's just say if a broker purchases Benefits Connect and they make the full BIN admin system available to their clients, um, the broker would have kind of master access where they would be able to see all of their groups, go into any of their groups and assist with kind of the ongoing administration of the group and the employee data, correct? Yes, that's correct. So that's the first, the system administration menu would be the broker's uh, access where they'd be able to view all their information. But then as far as the employer, the employer's access, the employer would be able to do the same things that the broker can. It's just that the broker has kind of, um, he's able to access all of his groups at once where the employer is only going to be logging in and being able to complete these tasks for their specific group data. So. Okay. So there aren't really roles and responsibilities that belong to one particular person over another, meaning the broker versus the employer. That, yeah, that's correct. It honestly, it depends on how you guys have the, the, the relationship set up with your client. Um, we've seen it where the broker does everything. We've also seen it where the broker doesn't do anything in our system and the client does everything. So, so, so it, it can be, it, it's, it's really defined based on the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So um, in regard to the ACA manager, is yeah. the the ACA manager, is that something that, I know that that's part of Benefits Connect, but is that something that, you know, brokers can purchase separate? Yes, yeah, absolutely. If they want to just use the ACA manager tool, they can use just the ACA manager tool. Okay, so I would need to get some information um, from you and share that. Yeah, we can talk about that offline. Okay. 
Now, in regard to the, so if a company is already using an HRIS, HRIS system such as, you know, ADP, and they're entering data through the ADP systems on their ads, their terms, you know, deletes, do you have to do that twice and then go to Benefits Connect and make so the same change? Currently, if, if, um, yeah, because um, ADP won't send us a, a file. Now, there are vendors out there that we can do, um, you know, one entry, point of point entry, like Paylocity is a payroll vendor we can use, do it with. It really depends on the payroll vendor, to be honest with you. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's going to be if you enter information in the ADP system, then you're going to have to enter it in our system as well. What we recommend you guys doing is using our, our system as a, a system of record where um, we can you enter everything in our system, then our system will communicate with the payroll vendor. I know it's probably not perfect in the way everybody wants to do it, but our system can talk to anybody. Sometimes ADP and these other payroll vendors, they have a hard time um, um, communicating with other with other vendors. So that's kind of why we recommend that. Um, now, with that being said, there's some work workarounds too. Um, so it, it really depends on what the, the payroll vendor is um, willing to do and willing to do with us. Okay. All right, thank you. So now if a broker wants to set up Benefits Connect, what would be the broker setup time? And then once you answer that question, if the broker has a client that they want to bring on, what would the setup time be for their client? And I know that the setup time can vary depending on the complexities, you know, of the benefit you know, programs that the employers are offering. So, you know, we're talking, if we're talking about small group, that could, you know, be a much simpler, shorter process than, you know, a group of, you know, 200 employees. Yeah. So, worst case scenario, it, it's a 45-day uh, implementation process. Okay. Now, is that, uh, is that for the client? Yeah. That's for the, so, for basically, for us to do implementation with, if a broker is purchasing our system, um, we could turn on their access right away. I mean that because there's really no. We'll just we'll create a, a account for them. We'll give them their logins, so they'll be up and running. But as, as far as them to have a group built into the system, it'd be 45 days. Okay, and and that's I mean that's pretty standard. I mean with with most. Yeah, systems. I mean it's it's standard. It's a standard time frame. Um, again, depending on the time of the year too. I mean if you want us to do if you want us to do an implementation for a client right now, we could, we we probably be able to do it faster than 45 days. Um, the fourth quarter, probably there's no way. I, um, my uh, implementation team would probably try to kill me if I say, hey, can we do like a 15-day turnaround time? Because we have, you know, we do, we have 9,000 employer groups on our system and, you know, a high percentage of them are going through open enrollment, you know, fourth quarter. So fourth quarter, the time frames are pretty strict, so the 45 days. Now, with that being said, once the group's up and running in our system, uh, let's say we do the implementation, um, they stay with the system. The next year, when their renewal's up, we call it a rollover. So if we're making any changes or plan, you know, updates to any of the plans, that's a two-week um, turnaround time. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, thank you. So um, is there? You mentioned something earlier about claims. Is there a claims tracking system within Benefits Connect? No, I just I was just saying because um, you know a lot of times if, if your broker is working on like a claims issue with a carrier, I was just saying you can store like the EOBs and if you have notes, you have multiple people working on the claims issue for an employee, you can store all the information in the system so you can have you know all the notes, all the EOBs stored on our system so you can just go to the employee's account, pull up their information, see what's going on, see what the last person did with that claims issue, things like that. We don't have a claims issue. Okay, so so maybe an employee has a claims issue, the employer could upload the data, and then the broker could log in to see what was there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, so um, there, there are some additional questions that we have. I think they're a little more... Um, personalized questions and, you know, agency specific or group specific. 
and I will certainly you know address those and respond to them. But as far as VP and Roll, just kind of a reminder to reiterate what we are offering. BP Enroll is a new online enrollment service available for brokers and their clients that are being, their group benefits that are being placed through Beer and Purpose. It's available for, for the carriers that we offer and the products that are available through each of those carriers. And right now we are currently, it's currently available for any group 51 plus in April. It will become available for small group. We have another webinar next Thursday where we are going to be taking a look specifically at the small group functionality. It does differ a little bit from the large group simply because the carrier, the small group carriers, you know, do not allow us to, you know, transfer the enrollment data, you know, through, uh, through EDI, through an electronic data transfer. So we have to handle that process a little bit differently but we are going to demonstrate that functionality you know, on next Thursday. And the follow-up email that we are going to be sending to everyone, we will include the, um, just you know, some general FAQs, how you get started setting up a group with BP, uh, BP Enroll. We'll include a recording of today's webinar. We will also include more information on Benefits Connect as well as contacts. So if you have questions about VP Enroll, please contact your sales rep, you know, talk to them. Um, they can tell you about it. In regard to Benefits Connect, I will include Matt's information. So if you want to have a more detailed discussion, you know, about this, um, you know, well, certainly <clears throat> he will be available, you know, for your questions. We also, I will also include the discounted pricing um, for you to purchase up. Um, I'm sorry, to purchase Benefits Connect to make that available to all of your clients. And pricing can also be discussed with you, Matt, because I know that one way to kind of reduce costs um, in regard to Benefits Connect is kind of through the ancillary offerings. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so what we're rolling out in, in 2015 is we're, uh, we have a lot of, um, you know, the voluntary carrier partnerships with, you know, pretty much everyone. And what we're trying to do to kind of, you know, figure out a way for to help pay for the system is, is doing a a commission split on the just the voluntary products with you guys. And that way we could pretty much give you guys the system for free. So um, if anybody wants more information on that, we can kind of you can give me a call after if you get my contact information and we can kind of go in more detail about that. But that's what we're kind of rolling out in 2015 is trying to find you know, different ways to help paying for the system because normally it's a PDPM um, uh, pricing, but we can, um, if we do some some work with commission splits on the voluntary products, then then we can give you either a discounted rate or potentially give you the system for free. Okay, and and there is, I mean, just to kind of speak briefly to the pricing, um, the the setup. So if a broker does want to purchase this and make it available to their clients, the setup is fifteen hundred. And that is going to include the setup for your clients. So as Matt mentioned, I mean, just can kind of turn it on quickly for the broker and get you your user ID and password. But those 45-day setups that are going to be required, you know, for each of your clients, that's going to be included in the 1500. There are many systems out there right now that charge, you know, twice that if not more for each specific client. So, you know, there's definitely value there. There is a minimum monthly charge, and then there is a, a PEPM, um, a per employee per month charge, once you exceed that minimum. But, again, all of that, you know, can be discussed with Matt as to where that falls. And as he mentioned, you know, on the ancillary pricing, you know, that, I'm sorry, the ancillary offerings can help lower that PEPM for you. So, if, um, as I mentioned, there are still some questions, uh, they are, you know, specific to, you know, each agency's book of business or a specific client, I will follow up on those, but for the sake of, you know, everyone's time, because we have run beyond our one hour, and I apologize for that, but hopefully you did find, you know, today's webinar valuable. If you would like to learn any more, please join us again next Thursday at the same time. And uh, we will follow up with you with some information as well as um, answers to any outstanding questions. Sorry for the sirens, folks. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Matt, for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody's time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.